Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. I'm your host, Brandis Daniel. I'm Brandis' co-host. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sybil and Lucy. Welcome. Welcome, great girlfriend. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes. Happy summer. So, Essence, can summer. we talk about Essence? Everything. Everything. It was everything. Oh, my It was so goodness. amazing. I can't wait for next year. It was so incredible. We want to say a huge thank you to Walmart for having us on the stage yes. doing a conversation with two of our favorite celebrity great girlfriends. Yep. Thank you so much uh, to the team over at Walmart and One Solution. Yeah. We really appreciate it. We're so excited about next year. I think we should read a review. All right. Let's do it. Go for it. Which one do you want to read? Okay, let's do... <laughs> I like this one. Did we read Jasmine Seymour already? We have Simone, it. okay. So her review says, and this is an iTunes review, subscribe to this podcast. I promise you won't regret it. If you're looking to elevate all areas of your life, this podcast is for you. Sybil and Brandis give amazing advice and they are very relatable. I'm a millennial and I find that their advice helps me navigate my career relationships and my spirituality. Trust me, this podcast is dope, bomb, and everything in between. Oh, did she just give so us a sweet. new tagline? She did. <laughs> Jasmine, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it, Jasmine. Yes. So, Sybil, what's been going on in your world? Oh, my gosh. Summer is fantastic. The weather's been beautiful. Family's been traveling. I've been working. I don't know. I feel like I haven't been sleeping much. <laughs> right. But everything's going great. What about you? Good. Well, I'm happy for Sky to be back mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. So uh, so that's really cool. So she's back and we're just kind of enjoying. This is the first month I've had where we're not really traveling. Uh, so uh-huh. we're just enjoying the city, enjoying Brooklyn, enjoying family this summer. I love it. Yeah. That's so awesome. We got all kind of pings and tings going off. We do. We got to silence all these people trying to interrupt. Can't you see me recording? <laughs> exactly. Oh, my goodness. So, today. So, today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects ever in life. Which is? Which is all about cliff jumping. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So, if you were at What Women Want 17... You know that we had these um, mini mentor sessions and some people said, I wish they were longer. Well, the point of it was for people to get a sample of a message from someone who would be considered a really dynamic mentor and then pick up later. If you want to have Brandis as your mentor, call and find out what it would cost to have her to be your (laughs) business mentor. Right? (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) Call. Call. Email. Right. Exactly. So we did four different sessions at the What Women Want conference. We did did a session with Tasha Adams Fox, and it was on etiquette and Mm -hmm. business etiquette. And then we did a second one. I did one on cliff jump. You Mm -hmm. did one on um, brand strategy and leaving your legacy. And then we had a a prudential, a really cool prudential advisor, by the way. Yes. Do one on um, the mini. She did like a mini money toolkit. I love it. So, um, so we're gonna give you guys a little bit of those on the next few episodes. But cliff jumping is so near and dear to me um, because the if you if I kind of like look at my life right now, uh, my entire life are the results of of cliff jumps. Everything that's mostly everything that's happening in my life. I've, it's been something that I've been afraid to do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that I kind of had to um, talk myself into and push myself and like take the jump and everything that I kind of look at now. That's like really, really, really spectacular in my world, including my marriage and having a child. Cause let me tell you, having a child was probably one of the biggest cliff jumps I've ever taken. Um, (laughs) Was um, all the result of, of me taking this, this big jump. And so it's just one of the things that I am super passionate about because I think people sometimes think that, um, you know, like the cliff jumps are for certain people and only certain people are supposed to take certain risks. And at the end of the day, cliff jumps are really just steps of faith. Yeah. That's really, yeah, that's really what it is. And 
it's impossible for us to um, please God without having faith. And so one of the things I talk to the great girlfriends about in our mini session is I really wanted them to reflect on their lives and think about, you know, the 100 year old you and think about at the end of your life, because we have to go to the end and then work our way through, but go to the end of your life and think about you're on, you know, your last week of life on this side Mm -hmm. and you're reflecting back and you're thinking about all the things you've accomplished and all the people you've touched and um, the things you've been able to experience. And I wanted to know were were there any regrets there? Mm. Were there some things that you wish you could have done? Are there some things that you wish you, you should have done? Um, And when you kind of really take yourself there mentally and emotionally and re like, like, fully take yourself there and see yourself lying in that bed. The one thing you don't want to see is you don't want to, one thing you don't want to have happen is you don't want to have regrets. Mm -hmm. And so there are things sometimes that stop us from taking the jump. There are things that are in our way. Um, We're on this road, right? And sometimes there's like these big mounds that we have to get past or we have to get over it that we have to get through. And so I asked the great girlfriends, what are three things? And I want you guys to think now of three things that's stopping you from moving forward. Mm. And those could be several things. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. <laughs> I have some ideas of my own, but I'm not sharing them on this podcast. Not, mm-hmm. But what do you think are some things that stop our great girlfriends from taking the leap? Just the the fear of not being enough, mm. the fear of not being loved. Yep, you know the fear of rejection. Yeah, absolutely. Those three for me, I think, are the major. Yeah, I think change too. Right. Mm. Sometimes we know mm. that when we take that jump, there's going to be a change that happens, but we don't know what that change is going to be. That's true. And so it's kind That's of like true. this fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. Like, what's going to be the result of this change? Right. I, I know so we talked about this on, um, I think it was Elevator Thinking. I, there was a few episodes back. We talked about that unknown realm and the, the life on the other side. <laughs> yeah. And how much greater it, it is, even just knowing that you have the courage to even look to even pursue the other side. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's like, at least I had the courage to do And we talked about uh, Peter walking on water. Yeah. At least he had the courage to be the one to be like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to get out there. I'm just going to yeah. go see. Absolutely. I mean, I think about when I first moved to New York, I actually, when I first put in my resignation letter, I knew it was something that I was supposed to do, but I didn't have a job when I put in my resignation letter. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I was going to move to New York. I had saved up a little bit of money. And when I say a little bit of money, I do mean a little little bit of money. Uh, But I felt like it was never going to be enough. Mm -hmm. I just kind of felt like I just had to do it and take that jump. And, um... God showed me, and I talked about this in an early episode, kind of how to do my resignation. So I sent a resignation letter to four people in my company. Mm -hmm. And I went to my boss, and I went all the way up. Mm -hmm. And I wrote all of them a very personal uh, resignation letter. But I remember telling my dad, hey, I'm going to give this resignation letter on Monday. And him saying, well, do you have a job in New York? Oh, wow. And I was like, I don't have a job in New York yet, but I'm pretty confident that I can get a job in New York based on my relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, But dad, I just know I have to do this. If I don't just jump, Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is ever going to happen. It wouldn't. And that's how I, I that that. that was how I honestly felt. I said, if I just don't take this jump, I don't know if it's going to happen right now. I'm in a, I was in a situation where I didn't have any kids. I didn't have any attachments. So I just felt like then was the perfect time for me to do it. And so I did, I took the jump and, um, and ended up with a a couple actually job offers after that, but not until after I took the jump. And Mm -hmm. Even after I had done that, that was when the president of my company called me up and asked me, did I have a job? And basically oh, wow. was like, if you, and I had never been in her office before. I had never been in her president's office. Did you know her? I knew her from meetings. Okay. But not like, yeah. No, we weren't wow. like, we weren't she BFS. You. But I gave her a resignation letter. That's so good. A personal one. And I told her like just her example to me and what it meant to me. And I told her in the letter what I had planned on doing. And she was like, do you have a job? Do you need a job? I love it. And so, but I feel like every time I've taken a jump, 
there's been something so amazing on the other end. Right. And it hadn't always turned out exactly the way I wanted it to. Mm Mm-hmm. But there's still been so much on the other side, whether it was a lesson that I got, whether it was courage that I got. Mm -hmm. Um, Moving to New York, I didn't have a place to live. I only had a place to live for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I negotiated that. Mm -hmm. And after that, I didn't know where I was going to live. I didn't really know. But I knew, again, I was supposed to be in New York. So Have you ever been homeless in New York? I've never been homeless. I know. I love it. I've never been homeless. I love it. And so... For, again, for me, it's just such a big piece of of my story. Like, cliff jumps are such a big piece of my story, such a big piece of all the results of my life that though there are times that are still super scary and I feel very overwhelmed, mm-hmm. I still feel like I have to keep pushing myself. That's so good. I think sometimes, too, people try to draw peace from the same place. So, for example, when you're cliff jumping, if you're going to draw peace from certainty, it has to be certainty in knowing that you're not going to fall. Right. It can't be the certainty that you once drew peace from, which is that I have a job, therefore I have, you know, first and 15th security. Right. Or I'm safe and I have peace in knowing that. No, it has to be the peace in knowing that I might not have the same the same form of security that I had before, Well, I might be sacrificing, but I won't ever reach a point of failure. Mm -hmm. It's not a failure. Even if I, even if I hit a low, I'm not hitting a failure because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. And I think, um, I think sometimes it's reconciling in your heart that your peace, the source of your peace has to be different. Yeah. It has to be a different source. <laughs> the Absolutely. source of your peace, the source of your certainty. Yeah. It can't be your own works. It, it can't, can't be. be that, well, you know, I've saved up this amount of money or I have this many friends. Because sometimes when you quit jumping, the, the you can't get anybody on the phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> All of a sudden, people are super busy. Yep. And they're like, oh, you moved? Oh, girl, I didn't think you were going to move for real. And, yep. you know, it's the same people that were cheering you forward. But when it comes time for them to be a resource for you, they're not always available. And so we can't pull from, we can't draw peace from that. Right. Or we can't draw belief from that. And and that typically is where people start to turn when they're like, okay, I'm feeling rejected. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling like, you know, maybe I made a bad decision because everyone is not playing the part that I thought they should play. Yeah. Absolutely. Time to re-script. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> and even when you start talking to people about cliff jumping, mm-hmm. you know, because sometimes we love, if you're like me, I love to share. I'm mm-hmm. a big fat share. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you know, I love to tell people about this is what I'm about to do before it's ever done. Mm-hmm. And for me, it gives me joy. I love talking about it. The more I talk about it, for me, it becomes very concrete internally. Mm-hmm. And But you can't always expect people to rally around that. Mm -mm. Because when I said I was moving to New York, I had a few people that really surprised me. (laughs) Really? Positively or? Negatively. (laughs) They really surprised me. Right, right. Yeah, they really did. And, you know, and and they were people who, people who I may have looked up to, people, grownups, like, like, well, like other serious grownups at the time. And I was, I mean, I was with in my late twenties when I was thinking about doing this, but I had mm. people to tell me like, you're not moving to New York or man, you've been talking about that for years. Oh, wow. Yeah. I had people to tell me that you've been talking about that for years. Wow. And so you have to be willing to go through the jump by yourself sometimes mm-hmm. and feel all that comes with it. Yeah. You know, another piece of that too, when you say that, I think about us having a conversation with one of my mentees, one of my favorites. Um, And we were talking about those naysayers and people like to, you know, dismiss the naysayer. They like to take the naysayer and toss them in the garbage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't get to be a part of my life. You don't get to do anything. You don't get to uh, have any say in my life. And I do agree that naysayers should not be involved in your validation process. But I was talking to her about, you know, enemies being footstools and how, you know, a naysayer to me would be considered an enemy to God's yes if Mm -hmm. someone's saying no Mm -hmm. or they don't agree with that. But it doesn't mean they can't be a footstool. So before we start discarding of these people that are saying they're (laughs) 
<laughs> their nose. Yep. We have to remember that enemies enemies to the plan hold a position as footstools. So they're meant to service us. So they're, yeah. going, they're going to get us a little bit higher, a little bit further ahead. Yep. They're going to create some form of advantage at some point in the process. Absolutely. And maybe we activated them too early well, we activated them in the wrong way. Yep. And we might want to revisit their revisit them at some point down the road. But we don't need to discard Mm-mm. of anyone. We need to say, hold tight. Yep. And that fuel that I get from hearing you say no and telling me all the things that are lies about God's plan, I'm going to take that fuel. I'm going to propel myself forward. I'm going to come back and give you a shiny picture of all the right <laughs> things. Right. And then you're going to want to participate, naysayer. Right. And I'm going to find a way For you that you can participate. Absolutely. Because you are supposed to play the role of a footstool. Absolutely. And I think it goes to like not taking things so personal. Yeah. Like sometimes people just can't see it for you. They cannot see it. They can't see it for themselves. Right. They can't see it for anyone. Yeah. And you have to be completely okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. Completely. But what will happen is those very people who can't see it from you, take a few cliff jumps. Oh. Just take a few. Just a few. You don't need to do too much. <laughs> just, just a like few. Because when they get a hold to yeah. your faith. Yeah. When they see it activated and they see... What happens when people, when you take that leap and then God sends people to participate in the vision, maybe not them, someone else, and they see it happening, won't be long. It won't be long. It won't be long. It won't be long. Absolutely. Um, and so, so it's, so it's, so it's just important. Like it's important for us to, um, to live our lives in a way that doesn't leave us with regrets. Absolutely. I agree with that. You know, and I feel like we miss out on so much because we love comfort Mm -hmm. and we don't like the feeling of anxiety at all. Avoiding anxiety. And we don't like the feeling of, you know, we don't like the feeling of not knowing what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we just stay right where we are Mm -hmm. and where we've been all our lives. So that we won't experience any discomfort. And isn't it funny how we want to cliff jump, but we want to bring everyone with us so that we feel safe jumping. Oh. That's <laughs> so, so I'm like, true. wait, I need my yes girl here. Yes. I need my this yes. person here. I need my 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 support system from home. I need my I need all these people saying yes. yes. And so they those people are gonna jump and with me. Yeah. Therefore I feel safe jumping. That's not how it works. It it isn't. It absolutely is not. They're not. It's it's a you move. Yeah. It's an independent move. It has nothing to do with anyone else. It's all about what God is moving you to do. Yeah. It has nothing to do with it. Mama can't jump with you. No. And Husband can't jump with you. And sometimes you can't even <laughs> tell people you're jumping. No. Like, sometimes no. before people know it, I'm already in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, you just did. And I'm yep. like, oh, yeah. I'm yep. for you to support it. Yep. And you know what's so funny? I love those um, those little um, office desk things that say while you were away. Yeah. I'd love to get you, get, catch you up on all the stuff that's been happening while I've been in the air. Right. While you were away, you were on ground. I was over here doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I want to catch you up on all the magnificent things that have taken place. I feel like that's sort of with the great girlfriends. I think about when we started, we didn't really tell a lot of people when we, while we were recording. No. Like Mm -hmm. no one knew until we sent that email. Yep. And then even then, you know, lots of people didn't respond. People that probably would have, we thought would have responded first did not, you know. Or people we thought would have listened first. Yeah, did not. You know, there, there, there are some people close to me. That still hasn't has listened. Listened. Same here. And I'm not counting on them to listen right. for that to define whether or not I should be doing absolutely what I'm doing. Right. Same here. Yeah. Same here. And you and and pe- you're right. People didn't have a clue. Even now, people are like, "Okay, I see this great girlfriend. It looks like it's going amazing." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've shared share with you." <laughs> yes, yes. I'm pretty sure I've put the, yeah. you know posted pictures and posted things. Mm-hmm. Um. But sometimes people are waiting for you to like, I don't know what they're waiting for. What I think they're waiting on our TV show. Is that, <laughs> is that what, is that maybe, what they're waiting on? Maybe, maybe they're so. waiting on our TV show, our radio show. I don't I'm not know. sure. I don't know what they're waiting on, but they're waiting on something. 
Um, but when I think about, you know, just kind of where I want to be in life and the impact that I want to make. And I think, you know, cliff jumping is so tied to your purpose, too, mm-hmm. because there's no point in making like random cliff jumps. <laughs> but <laughs> it's so tied to your purpose. But when I think of where I want to be mm-hmm. and if I was to ever be recognized for what do I want to be recognized for? Mm. And kind of, you know, I had the ladies think about if Oprah was doing a dinner and mm-hmm. she was doing like her 50 women that inspire her. Oh, wow. And she was saying, I'm so excited. I'm here today because we're here to celebrate blank. And you put your name where the blank is. And I'm here to celebrate blank because she has inspired us all by, and you fill in that blank, right? Mm-hmm. And so because of that, she gets the great girlfriend of the year for, you know, Mm -hmm. feeding 1,000 people in her community or, you know, changing the lives of millennial men or being on the ground with prison reform Mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, providing a platform for multicultural fashion designers Mm -hmm. or, you know, funding um, nonprofits all over the world Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever that thing is that you plan on, like whatever it is, that's your purpose that, you know, this is why you're here. Mm -hmm. Like, think about that, Mm -hmm. you know, and people always see people when they get awards, but what they don't like, nobody's able to go receive an award and give their whole journey in their speech. (laughs) (laughs) They get like, what, 60 seconds to give a speech right before the music plays. So their their speech is only their Mm -hmm. thank yous. Mm -hmm. Their speech can't be, well, let me tell you guys how I got here and all the pitfalls and the times that I wanted to quit and the times that nobody supported me and when the mm-hmm. times when I didn't have enough money and I didn't think I could go on and the times that miracles happen and the t- like nobody's able to give that in an acceptance speech. Right. right. So we just see the highlight, but we don't understand everything they had to go through and all the cliff jumps they had to take to be where they are. Mm-hmm. That's so true. It is so true. Oh my goodness. I'm I'm sitting here thinking about it in a moment. I'm like, <laughs> you know, um people never really want to embrace the journey part of it. Nobody and wants to embrace the journey. That's where all of the the precious, you know, victory really lies because you get strength from every single time you have to get up, every single time you have to pick up, every single time you have to say yes against the no. Mm. Every time you have to knock at a door, or peek in a window, <laughs> or send an email a thousand times over, or fax something, or show up somewhere, or use your last dime, you gain strength from every single one of those moments. Those are milestones that add up to these huge moments that people get to see play out. And uh, it's never easy to take on all of those moments. But if we reject them, we miss our, we miss our, our big moments if we can't take on these small ones. You know, if it, if we're not dedicated to the work, yeah, the work part yeah. of the cliff jump, which is like, this jump is going to require some work from me. It's going to require yeah. some sacrifice. It's going to require some intention. But I'm well aware and I'm fully committed to it. Therefore, there's not a consequence that comes along the way that could take me off course. Right. I'm already dedicated to what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like a covenant, a vow agreement that you make with yourself and your purpose and your mission. And it's like, therefore, I'm capable of jumping because I got the parachute. I have that. I'm not looking for anyone. Like, Brandis, hand me a parachute. Right. Brand- Brandis, you know, call a helicopter. Right. No, I'm not. I'm not right. doing that. Right. I'm not doing that. I'm in the zone. And I'm no. going to stay in the zone. And you're going to, when you meet me, you're supposed to meet me in my zone. Yeah. Because the truth, is, Boom. the truth is, we don't know when we're going to leave here. No. Like, no I'm saying wait till you get 100, but the truth is, it could happen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It could happen mm-hmm. today. It could happen next week. And the one thing I can fully say is that if I leave here today, which I, I pray that I don't because mm-hmm. I want to be here for Miss Scott. Yeah, no, can't leave today. But <laughs> we got so much to do, so we'll not, not a good day to leave. Mm-mm, we don't need you leaving today. But if I did, I could honestly like leave here in peace. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I've, I, I feel like I've done the things I'm supposed to do. I'm, I'm, I'm on my path. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm like in my purpose. Mm-hmm. Like I don't have a ton of regrets on what I could have, should have, would have done. Yeah. And it's, it's a very uncomfortable way to live. But it's a very joyful way to live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Because it's mm-hmm. not it's not easy. And Shanisha Warner um, Jackson did a Dreamers Journey at the What Women Want conference. Mm-hmm. And it was so good because she talked about what happens when God gives you a dream and you start to move out on that dream. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just talking about the giants are going to keep coming. Like the giants aren't going to stop coming. Mm-hmm. The giants of rejection, the giants of fear, the giants mm-hmm. of lack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like... Like, those giants aren't going to stop going, but, again, like, how do you how do you define success? Mm-hmm. So, do you f- to f- define success by pursuing your purpose, or is it, like, the outcome? Mm-hmm. You know, because I think about the What Women Want conference, going back to that, and Sybil and I, our purpose was met for that conference 100%. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. One hundred percent. Our purpose was met. Mm-hmm. I don't think there was a woman at that conference that did not feel leave, did not leave feeling loved mm-hmm. and accepted mm-hmm. and inspired and encouraged. I don't think there was one. No. If she did, she was at the wrong event. She didn't come <laughs> she to the did conference. I come to the conference. She didn't come. She didn't come because that room was full and the heartbeat was the same and the desires were the same and the passion was there. It was just, it was so full. Yeah. It was full, absolutely. But there were some other things that Sybil wanted and I wanted for the conference that didn't come to fruition in Mm -hmm. the way that we had thought, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's like, do we regret taking that jump? No. No, Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. Because even though some of the results weren't what we wanted them to be, the core, the purpose was fulfilled. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Totally fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. It really was. And mm-hmm. so, um, and, and, well, you know what I was just thinking? Really, when we take these jumps, it's not about us, right? So us taking that jump with the What Women Want mm-hmm. conference, it wasn't about you and I. It was no. about the women in the room leaving with what they needed to leave with. Yeah. And the sooner we all recognize that we're vessels, the yeah. sooner <laughs> we yeah. become more enthusiastic about being available to God's plan. There are times when I have wanted to quit. Mm-hmm. Just be like, I'm done with this. So like, I'm trying not to cry. Mm-hmm. I haven't cried on an episode in a while. It's been a while since you <laughs> cried. Man, this one is pulling. Oh, but just quit because it gets so hard. Mm-hmm. But I'll hear... You know, I every time I feel that way, I call my purpose, mm-hmm. and my purpose are designers, mm-hmm. multicultural designers. So I'll call one of them and just have a conversation. They don't know how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. I don't say I'm calling you because I felt like I wanted to quit. I just call them and say, "How are you doing?" Mm-hmm. And that conversation always leads me back to my mm-hmm. purpose. And so sometimes we have to call our purpose. Yeah. What's your purpose? Is it children? So so mm-hmm. go and talk to a child. And just have a conversation. It'll take you back to your purpose. Or if your purpose is, I don't know why I keep going to prison reform. I think that's something that's been on my heart lately. But if that's what it is, you know, go to the prison or go, you know, watch a movie that takes you back to your purpose. No matter what it is, if your um, purpose is marriages, go talk to a married couple if you're whatever your purpose is, whenever you get to the place where you feel like I can't take any more jumps for this because it's too hard, go and talk to it. So go good. and visit it. Yeah, it makes all the difference because it's not, it's not about the person who jumps. Yeah, get it. I love it. Yeah, it's so much bigger than you. We got some new cliff jumpers out there. I know you're listening. Oh, we do. <laughs> and we I know do. you're preparing to jump. We and do. I just I want to specify as well with cliff jumping because sometimes we think that it's about entrepreneurship. It is not just about entrepreneurship. No, We're it's talking not. about purpose. We're talking about you even being elevated in a company that you're already in or going after a company you know you that you know you feel like you're being led to contribute at or you know, whatever it is, it's not just, I want to make it clear, it's not about entrepreneurship no. specifically. There are some specific places where people are feeling led to set themselves um, free from the bondage of a company or a check that they just feel tied mm-hmm. to. But I know some, and we, Brandis and I both know some really phenomenal 
women who are just kicking butt in corporations and doing yeah. a fantastic job. Yeah. But that in itself is a cliff jump. It is. You know, whatever you're, whatever you're called to do is what she's specifically speaking to. Because I just don't want any woman to feel, oh, entrepreneurs. No, 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 no. This is a calling that she's talking about. And sometimes, simple, a cliff jump for me was allowing myself to be loved. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Sometimes that's yeah. a cliff jump. Like, allowing somebody to love me and me to love mm-hmm. someone was a cliff jump for me. That's good. After wow. after dealing with the grief that I dealt with. And you guys got to go back all the way. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know that story, we've told it. It's in, what, like, episode two or three. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, don't be saying, what's she talking about? Go, we talked about it. Go do your homework. <laughs> um, but, yeah, sometimes it's as simple mm-hmm. as that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is not simple. Let me take no. that back. Yeah, but it could be a decision such as that. Yeah. So with me deciding to ditch my birth control pills, oh, I'm yeah. getting real personal oh, on this goodness. podcast. But that was a cliff jump. Yeah. Yeah. Getting pregnant with Sky with was a cliff jump because I yeah. felt like it wasn't the right time. But then somebody oh. was like, "It's never the right time." Never. Never. None and now of us I'm would be like, here. Oh, that was a good time. <laughs> now looking back on <laughs> that it, that was a good time. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> With your little munchkin. <laughs> I love it. But well, it's true, good. right? Yeah. It's like so many ways. Me allowing Sky. I had a girlfriend, great girlfriend, Nia. When I was worried about Sky going to Memphis, I called Nia. And we were talking. And she said, Brandis, you don't want to talking about cliff jump all the time. This is a cliff jump. You need to take the jump. For said, daycare? No. For letting her, oh, go, let to her go to Memphis for two yeah. weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, Nia. <laughs> she, yeah, she called you to the she carpet. She did call me to I the carpet. I love it. I love it. She sure did. So so good. Yeah. Well, girlfriends, you're set. You are set. You're all set. And we're here in your corner cheering you forward, supporting everything that you uh, need to do and that you're called to do. And uh, we're happy to hear all the testimonies over email and social and so forth. I want to thank Kwaku, my boo. And I want to thank Rich Daniel for being there for most of my cooking. Uh huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And Sam and Dylan, my kids are now official. I guess they would be jumpers as well. <laughs> yes, they are. Sam is like, you know, my mom's podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I want to thank Miss Guy. Yay. And we want to thank all of our great girlfriends, our families who have been such huge supporters of ours. Um, Sybil and I both, our families were there for the What We Want conference, like filling mm-hmm. in wherever they mm-hmm. needed to fill in. So we just want to thank you. We so appreciate you. Yeah. And for you, great girlfriends, for trusting us as your go to source for everything life, love, and laughter. Yes, make sure you listen each Wednesday on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast Republic, Podcast Bean, Blueberry, and every other podcasting service. Absolutely, and check us out on our social on Instagram. The Great Girlfriends. Twitter. The underscore great GFS. Facebook. The Great Girlfriends. And our Facebook group, we are almost 17,000 strong, and that's also under The Great Girlfriends. Yes. Make sure you post your questions online. You share with a friend. Keep Keep listening listening and keep keep being a great great girlfriend. girlfriend. I'm Sybil. I'm Brandis. And we are signing off. Peace. Peace.